good morning, ladies and gentlemen, joining us today from Belarus. And good afternoon for all our colleagues joining this webinar from Sri Lanka. Uh, so welcome to the webinar focused on uh, prospects of Belarus-Sri Lanka bilateral trade development, which is jointly organized by Sri Lanka Embassy in Moscow, together with Sri Lanka Export Development Board, Belarusian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and National Center for Marketing and Tri Study in Belarus. Uh, so, uh, considering actually the uh, growing demand patterns and supply uh, capacity of both countries, uh, there could be uh, like more avenues to ex uh, expand our trade and economic relations between Sri Lanka and Belarus. So with that objective, uh, embassies organize this uh, uh, like the first session of this webinar uh, with, together with uh, Sri Lankan and uh, Belarusian organizations to give you first-hand information. So uh, in order to open this webinar, first I would like to invite Professor M.D. Lama Vansa, His Excellency the Ambassador of Sri Lanka to the Russian Federation to welcome the participants. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Tavisha. Thanks very much. And uh, good morning to friends from Belarus side, which include Mr. Denis and uh, Ms. Nadia and Valerie Sadoha. And also Sri Lankan colleagues, for Mrs. Marani Badegama, Mrs. Anoma Prematilaka, and also, also Mr. Harsha uh, Padberia. And I know that uh, Sri Lankan Embassy has been giving you a busy time and organizing uh, seminars after seminars to connect uh, interested parties from the six countries that the Moscow Embassy is accredited to, but I, I don't uh, make any apologies on that. This webinar is being conducted consequence to my visit to Belarus last year during which uh, we had a lot of interactions, not only related to trade, but we were looking at a wider spectrum of activities to improve relationships between Belarus and Sri Lanka. And uh, Belarus universities have about 1,000 Sri Lankan students across uh, four universities uh, in, in uh, Minsk, then Gomel, Godna and also Vitebs. I had the opportunity of visiting all these universities and cities and although it was hectic, I really enjoyed the lovely people and hospitality uh, and uh, the cleanliness of the country. And during the visit, uh, friends from Belarus and we had the opportunity of meeting high officials and the ministers of education, health, foreign ministry and the defense and also uh, rectors of universities uh, with whom we have uh, had very useful uh, deliberations and uh, initiatives have been uh, uh, have been already uh, taken up uh, by Sri Lankan side. Um, the main purpose was to visit students during the COVID pandemic to improve their morale and also to address some of the concerns that they had. And subsequently every month, uh, Ms. Tanas, my deputy, is having a Zoom meeting with them so that uh, they are keep in the loop with the embassy. Um, Belarus has been a very friendly country to Sri Lanka, both at bilateral uh, discussions and the fora and also multilateral organization. It is nothing but easy to have a good understanding with uh, our colleagues from Belarus and also for the Sri Lanka helps Belarus. And uh, uh, visits by high officials uh, are due. I hope after the pandemic is over, those will take place slowly uh, because there's a lot of areas of visits to be made by Sri Lankan uh, foreign ministry and the other ministries. Um, trade between Sri Lanka and Belarus stands at the moment about 30 to 31 million US dollars in a few sectors. But as we have already seen, uh, like in pharmaceutical sector, agriculture, those are the areas that Sri Lanka and Belarus can um, expand their horizon. Uh, 
Uh, today, of course, you will be probably talking about more specific uh, targets. And uh, I'm sure uh, those uh, discussions uh, will be fruitful. Uh, in the background that Sri Lanka has been a beneficiary of GSP scheme offered by the Russian Federation since 2010, which Belarus is a member country. And Sri Lanka enjoys 25% of tariff reductions from the current custom duty rate. So um, without uh, wasting much, much of your time, and while we are working to a point on reconcile in Minsk, uh, which we did not have for last, I think, uh, six, seven years, um, I hope this discussion uh, will be very fruitful. And the main function of the embassy is to link uh, interested parties from Sri Lanka with in interested parties from affected countries. However, our commitment will not end there, but whatever we you need assistance by both sides, certainly we, there, we are there, Tavisha and her team, will be there to uh, attend to them and have a good day. Uh, what is it? Does it um, do we need to That's translate? That's what I'm asking, whether we need translation or not. As from Belarus side, uh, Mr. Dennis, do you think we need to translate it or? We don't need translation. Thank right. you, we understand. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, now I would like to invite Ms. Malani Baddegamage, Additional Director General Development of Sri Lanka Export Development Board to welcome you all. Good morning to the participants from Russia and Belarus and good afternoon to the participants from Sri Lanka. I am honored to make this uh, His Excellency Professor M.D. Lamavansa, the Ambassador of Sri Lanka to the Russian Federation, Ms. Nadia Paltra, Specialist on Marketing, National Agency of Investment and Privatization, Mr. Denis Melikshin, Deputy Chairman of the Belarusian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Mr. Valery Sadoho, Director National Center for Marketing and Price Studies, I am honored to make this introductory remark on behalf of the Sri Lanka Export Development Board at this very important webinar on prospects of Belarus-Sri Lanka bilateral trade development, which is jointly organized by Sri Lanka Embassy in Russia, Belarusian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, National Center for Marketing and Price Study in Belarus, and Sri Lanka Export Development Board. EDB considers Republic of Belarus as a potential market to develop bilateral trade. Our bilateral economic ties are currently modest, but rapidly growing. There is a scope for us to deepen and broaden our trade and investment relations. During the past, EDB has undertaken several promotional programs in the Belarusian market. EDB has organized a trade delegation to Belarus in 2013 parallel to the state visit to Belarus by then Prime Minister of Sri Lanka. During this state visit, a Belarus-Sri Lanka business forum was also organized and also EDB was able to sign an MOU with the National Center for Marketing and Price Study with functions under the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Belarus. When we look at the current situation in the world, this is a difficult time for all business. People to people, physical connections have become more challenging. This type of virtual meetings are very important to give opportunities for the business and buyers and sellers to connect with each other. Therefore, on behalf of the EDB, I would like to convey my sincere appreciation to His Excellency, the Ambassador, for initiating this kind of timely programs with the Republic of Belarus and other Russian countries. Also, I take this opportunity to thank the two Belarus trained, trade organizations, uh, Belarusian Chamber of Commerce and Industry and National Center for Marketing and Price Study for coming forward to jointly organize this event. 
I hope after this initial information sharing webinar, we could jointly organize one-to-one -one business meetings for the benefit of the private sector in both countries to have fruitful discussions to develop trade type ties between each other. EDB is committed to extend our fullest support to facilitate such endeavors in collaboration with the Sri Lanka Embassy in Russia. EDB wish to share information on selected Sri Lankan products having potential to export to the Belarusian market during the technical sessions. I end this initial remarks and wish all participants a successful event. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, finally, I would like to invite, invite Mr. Dennis Melshikin, Deputy Chairman of the Belarusian Chamber of Commerce and Industry for his welcome address. Thank you. Thank you very much. Your Excellency Ambassador Lamavansa, ladies and gentlemen, it is my utmost pleasure to welcome you at the today webinar. First of all, let me express my sincere gratitude to the Embassy of the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka and the Export Development Board of Sri Lanka for the initiative to arrange such an important online event for the two countries' business communities. As a matter of fact, our mission as a chamber Futures the creation of a favorable platform for our business people to exchange proposals and vision on promote, promising uh, avenues for cooperation. In this regard, such a meeting is an unique opportunity and privilege for our business and for the Belarusian Business Support Organization to get first hand information about the existing opportunities for the bilateral B2B project. The Russian company participant registered for the event representing the following scope of business domains. Pet and oil industry, logistic, production of mining, machinery and equipment, road marking materials and machinery, textile, dairy product, optical product, in giants, electrical equipment, elevated transportation system, products for animal nutrients, organization of exchange trade, export risk insurance, and other. Also, the bilateral trade volume between Belarus and Sri Lanka is remaining quite modest, totaling about 31.9 million US uh, American dollars in 2020. There is truly a good potential to propel it to a much higher level. And we are quite optimistic about the ambitions task bearing in mind the excellent industrial, petrochemical and meat and dairy cap capacity of the Republic of Belarus. These sectors truly introduce room for joint project and technology transfer. On behalf of the Belarusian Chambers of Commerce and Industry, I can assure you that we as a chamber will do our best to provide Sri Lankan and Belarusian company with full support and assistance required. Now I would like to make a short presentation of the Belarusian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, speaking in a nutshell about our activities and services we are providing to Belarusian forage business. First, the Belarusian Chamber of Commerce and Industry is the largest professional business association in the Republic of Belarus with more than 65 years of operation. Currently, we have 2,520 members, individual entrepreneurs, small and medium-sized business, as well as big companies and well-known Belarusian, Belarusian brands, such as Minsk Tractor Works, Minsk Automobile Plant, Belas, 
Minsk Motor Plant, Delshina, Comunarca, and other large scale enterprises you can see on this slide. As you see, the non state sector accounts for 85% of the total numbers of members. 71% uh, of all members of the Bell CCI are small and medium business. Our corporate strategy has been set up to achieve the following goals. Export increase, Polish economic ties between businesses, wide range of business services, protection of Bell CCI's uh, members' interests. The formula present here sum up the set of tools we have to reach our targets experience opportunities and infrastructure our story as a chamber started with the creation of the minsk branch of the all union chambers of commerce in 1952. today the bill cci is part of an unique chamber network of more than 20,000 uh, 20, chambers of commerce. The Bell CCI is a member of the Euro Chambers, the International Chambers of Commerce, and the Silk Road International Chambers of Commerce. There is a special law providing the legal basis for our activities. The Bell CCI is working in close cooperation with the Council of Ministers the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Belarus, executive committees and diplomatic missions of the Republic of Belarus and foreign countries. The Bill CCI has signed 284 agreements and memoranda on cooperation with foreign business support organization from 102 countries worldwide to be better placed and take advantage of direct contacts with major trade partners of the Republic of Belarus, including the memorandum of understanding between the Bell CCI and the Ceylon Chambers of Commerce. As a practical and effective mechanism of business cooperation supported by the Bell CCI is a business council. A business council gives an opportunity for the business community to inform government bodies about the existing proposals and relevant business issues and speed up the process of putting business ideas into effect. The Bell CCI has set up 23 business councils with 22 partners countries. The Belarusian Chambers of Commerce and Industry have six regional branches in each region. 30 uh, representative, uh, representative offices and well as three specialized unitary enterprises, Bell Interexpo, Bell Patent Service and Center for Business Education and the Bell CCI International Court of Arbitration. Our Chambers is actively expanding its network of foreign representatives. As a rule, our representatives are foreign citizens holding a high social status, necessary professional qualities, and the ability to properly carry out their function. 43 Bell CCI representatives were appointed in 35 countries. Our chambers offer a wide range of business services, organization of business events and exhibition, expert examination and appraisal, certification, marketing and other services listed here. The LCCI experts provide legal support to Belarusian enterprises conduction for trade activities represent their interests in court and arbitration. Our qualified specialists render proper, property assessment services and certify local product. 
The Bill Society team have extensive experience in organizing bilateral and multilateral businesses events both in Belarus and abroad, amounting to all, almost 700 events annually. On May 11, 2018, the President of the Republic of Belarus signed the decree. According to the decree, the Bell CCI is the coordinator of exhibition and fair activities in foreign countries. Our unitary enterprise, Bell Interexpo, is act acting as the organizer of Belarusian national exhibition abroad, as well as foreign exhibition in the Republic of Belarus. The sector for foreign economy activity of the Bell CCI is setting up new services for foreign and Belarusian business listed in front of you, such as marketing research, Eurasian Economic Union market study, consulting on setting up and doing business in the Republic of Belarus, analyzing of, of export and import of Belarus, search for business partners in Belarus, Information support of Belarusian, Belarusian and foreign companies is an important part of our business promotion comp campaign. Our handout materials are available in Russia and English. Mercury, Nestle, Belarusian export, uh, Exporters, Reference Edition, Belarus Business Partners, Reference and Information Edition. For more information, you can uh, visit our website. Due to high proficiency uh, uh, of its experts' wide experience in rendering various kinds of services and assistance to Belarusian and foreign businessmen, the BLCCI has a reputation for being a consistent business partner. We are looking forward to our fruitful and Mutually beneficial cooperation. I want to wish all of the Belarusian, Belarusian and Sri Lanka's participants present online today successful and fruitful work in search of new opportunities for mutually beneficial cooperation. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Dennis, for giving us, uh, sharing us first-hand information about the services provided by the Belarusian Chamber and Commerce and Industry. Uh, so now we will go to the presentation sessions of this uh, webinar session today. First presentation will be delivered by Ms. Malani Badegamage, Additional Director General Development of Sri Lanka Export Development Board. And uh, she will enlighten us on uh, export potential of the agriculture sector of Sri Lanka. Over to you, Ms. Malini. Thank you, Tavisha. I would like to uh, give you a snapshot on uh, trade between Sri Lanka at the beginning. Uh, between Sri Lanka and Belarus at the beginning, uh, in what imports and exports uh, have been uh, growing from 2016 to 2019, as you can see from the data in this table. And uh, we can see a potential to grow this business between uh, trade between both countries uh, in both in exports and imports in future. Last year, I think the, due to the COVID-19 pandemic situation, the trade has uh, reduced a little, but uh, we hope that we can continue the momentum uh, in year 2020 with this uh, start, uh, the, our this presentation, and we can start our business again and continue uh, more uh, trade between the two countries in the coming years. This slide indicates uh, the major products traded between the two countries at the moment. Uh, top five exports to Belarus from Sri Lanka uh, are mainly the coir-based products, tea 
and uh, pneumatic tire uh, retreated rubber tires and tubes, uh, spices, and coconut based products, mainly the coconut milk and other kernel products, and also the fiber products, and some seafood products are exported at the moment. Sri Lankan top five imports from Belarus are fertilizer. That is the number one product we are major component we are importing from Belarus to Sri Lanka, fertilizers, paper and paper products, labels printed or not, then other products of plastic, manufactured to tobacco in little uh, amount, but we think we can do more imports and also do more exports. We can see the potential of doing a lot of exports. So during my, this, my presentation, I will mainly focus on the agriculture products and my colleague will follow up the presentation with the uh, industrial products. Sri Lanka is predominantly a tropical country and diverse terrain has enabled her to cultivate vast range of agriculture crops, ranging from tropical to temperate, such as tea, coconut, rice, fruits, vegetables, spices, aromatic medicinal herbs, etc. Sri Lanka is an island with a territorial sea of 21,500 square kilometers and a coastal line of 1,340 kilometers, which help her to source fresh seafood for export processing. A large number of lagoons, estuaries, and inland water resources, such as lakes, are available for aquaculture production. Sri Lankan food manufacturing sector is consisted of large number of industrialists catering to both local and international markets. Sri Lanka offers a range of fresh processed food and food ingredients to satisfy the global consumer demand for healthy and safe food. The freshness of the raw material we used in our products and ingredients rich in nutrition, taste and aroma used in the food manufacturing process has contributed to the high taste and goodness of these Sri Lankan export products. Sri Lankan product basket, you can see from this slide, uh, the main contributor to the export basket is tea, Ceylon tea, and coconut and coconut based products, 23%, food and beverage presents about 12%, Spices and essential oils, oleoresins, 11%. Uh, fish and fishery products, 7%. And uh, fruits and vegetables, nuts, and other export crops uh, in small amounts. Uh, so you can see the main, main, main income from the export is coming from tea, coconut, uh, food and beverage, and spices, and fishery products. So we see the potential of these products exporting to the Russian and Belarus market as well. Uh, out of the total exports, uh, agriculture products contribute to about 26% in 2019. Uh, but in 2020, with the COVID situation in the world, the demand for natural products, such as coconut-based, kernel-based products, spices, and other fishery products has increased. And we have achieved 30 we have we would, we could contribute 30 percent agriculture sector could contribute 30 percent uh, to the uh, national export earnings so we expect this increase will uh, rise within this year as well and we have experienced more growth compared to last year in the agriculture sector during the first quarter of 2021. This slide uh, shows the major products we export to the Belarus market, major agriculture products. Uh, tea, tea packets, green tea and tea bags is the major product uh, we have exported. Uh, last year, the exports have reduced little. Coconut fiber products, then coconut kernel based products. We can see a tremendous growth in export of coconut kernel, kernel based products like coconut milk, oil and desiccated coconut. Uh, coconut shell products also we have exported in 2019. 
uh, like activated carbon, charcoal, and uh, 2020, we have not seen any, uh, any, any uh, exports, but we think we can continue this in year 2021. Spices and concentrates also, we have seen an increase during la compared to the 2019. Fruits, uh, vegetables, and uh, also processed food products are the main, main products we can uh, export to the Belarus market. And in the next slides, I would like to more elaborate on these potential products to the, Bel to the Belarus market for you to get an idea about the uniqueness and the quality of Sri Lankan products. I will start, up, start with the Ceylon tea. This is a well-known product to you. Sri Lanka is the fourth largest tree producer in the world and also the third largest tea exporter in the world. And we are the number one orthodox tea producer to the world. And uh, Ceylon tea is identified as the finest in the world due to its unique flavor, fragrance, and freshness. Our tea is hand-picked and produced through both orthodox and artisanal methods. Ceylon is, tea is the first to award the ozone friendly status in the world uh, under the Montreal Protocol Treaty. And uh, it is considered as the cleanest tea in the world in terms of pesticide residues. First ethical tea brand of the world, uh, Sri Lanka, Ceylon tea is the first ethical tea brand of the world recognized by the United Nations. And it is grown under the highest social and environmental standards, global gap, FSC, fair trade, and tea is processed under highly uh, food safety conditions. All factories are ISO 2020,000 HACCP certified. And also Sri Lanka has the most world famous tea auction system. And uh, Sri Lanka has developed a trademark two trademarks to identify Ceylon tea and also the pure Ceylon tea. And this logo is registered in 102 countries. Our export basket to the world available in both in bulk and value added forms. 51% uh, of the tea exports is done as bulk tea and the rest is done as value added tea as tea packets. Uh, green tea, tea bags, instant tea, and flavored tea also we produce. Uh, tea flavored with herbs, fruits, and spices. The consumers in the world who wish to experience the unique flavor, fragrance, freshness of tea are always looking at Ceylon tea, and uh, it, they are looking at Ceylon tea with much confidence. So we also invite you to consume much more Ceylon tea and uh, feel the difference of our uh, unique taste of Sri Lankan tea. Then I move into the coconut and coconut based products. Sri Lanka is the fifth largest coconut producer in the world, producing uh, around 2.8 to 3 billion nuts per annum. And total land area under cultivation is around uh, nearly 400,000 hectares. Coconut-based products are mainly segmented into three categories. And we do the highest value addition in the coconut industry. And we use all products, all parts of the coconut tree to produce value added products for export. Coconut kernel-based products, the inner part of the coconut fruit, Coconut fiber and substrate based products produced from the shell of the coconut. Coconut shell based products, the hard part of the coconut is used to produce shell based products. Uh, Sri Lankan coconut based products are world renowned due to the uniqueness in color, aroma and taste. Not only about that, our fiber is extracted through a traditional extraction method called drum system and it gives more strength, strengthly fiber, number one brown fiber producer in the world, and also the bristle fiber produced by Sri Lanka using this uh, traditional extraction method is used to develop, to manufacture the household and industrial uh, 
uh, brush products. So you can experience the difference of using our brushes to uh, compare to the most natural brushes and environmental friendly natural brushes in your uh, households and industries. And also Sri Lanka is the fourth largest DC producer to the DC exporter in the world. So these are the main uh, products uh, categories we have. We are exporting at the moment in the coconut sector. Uh, coconut kernel products uh, producing a range of products. I will explain this more in my next few slides. Uh, oil, virgin coconut oil, coconut cream, coconut chips, desiccated coconut, coconut tanking, coconut water, and a lot of range, range of products available from the coconut kernel. And uh, highest value addition, as I to told earlier, highest value addition is done in the coconut industry to cater to the many industries in the world. And many industries, the many con con uh, con con uh, the food industries in the world and confectionery industries, they are using our coconut kernel products as a raw material to their food ingredient, as a food ingredient in their manufacturing products. Coconut fiber and substrate products, fiber is exported as raw fiber, then as value-added products such as coir yarn, coir twine to use in orchards and uh, to support the vines in orchards. And also we produce brush and brooms for household and industrial use, as I told earlier. Then we produce grow bags and coconut cubes, coir blocks, briquettes to use in uh, greenhouses. Grow bags are mainly used in the greenhouse agriculture to cultivate uh, tomatoes, uh, strawberries, bell pepper, flowers uh, with deep irrigation and fertigation systems. So uh, our cocoa grow bags are used in many, many uh, greenhouse agriculture uh, countries in doing greenhouse agriculture in the world, uh, such as Europe, uh, USA, Canada, then Japan, Korea, uh, every country use this uh, product because we produce this as a high quality product to, uh, to use in many crops. So we, if you want to uh, grow strawberries, we can produce the mixture to match with the strawberry cultivation. So likewise, we have developed potting mixtures to supply to the, uh, according to the uh, crop wise uh, to match the uh, demand. Then coconut shell products, uh, we are producing uh, shell charcoal, activated carbon. This activated carbon is used in many applications like water purification, World famous water purification companies use Sri Lankan activated carbon in their water filters. And we, the activated carbon could be used in the chemical industry. And because of the pureness of our activated carbon, it is used in the blood dialysis also. And uh, gas masks, uh, gold refinery, air purification, every aspects of uh, uh, industries, uh, this activated carbon is used. So I can see a drop in uh, our activated carbon imports to the Belarus market. So you can think of the uh, purity of our product and consider more uh, business with these activated carbon companies uh, in the coming years. So if I uh, give you a small introduction about the range of value added coconut kernel products available in Sri Lanka, the desiccated coconut uh, is very famous in the world because of the uh, quality of our products and also it is used in many uh, confectionery industries like chocolate industries, uh, then ice cream. Uh, uh, for an example, the Kellogg chocolate, the Bonte chocolate uh, that contains our desiccated coconut manufactured in Sri Lanka. And it is used in many biscuit, manu by the many biscuit manufacturers in the world. And uh, we have several grades, fine, medium, super, and low fat DC also, if you need the people who are con conscious of health conditions, we can give uh, the low fat DC. And uh, also the coconut oil uh, is now considered in the world as a very good healthy product. And uh, it is, has a unique fragrance and 
it is used in many industries like not only the uh, the, the the food industry but also in the cosmetic industry as a application to the skin and also to develop many cosmetic products uh, mainly the virgin coconut oil is very healthy product and uh, it is uh, it is uh, extracted uh, by using a unique method and also it contains the natural vitamins and benefit all beneficial properties of the coconut oil is protected in this uh, during the extraction process and it contains very low free fatty acids and it is very good for the uh, consumption and also used as a cosmetic. And uh, coconut flour, coconut milk powder is also a major product we export from Sri Lanka. Liquid coconut milk also available and it is now considered as a, a healthy drink uh, in the uh, Western world to uh, for the people who are allergic for the animal cow's milk and they now use it for drinking purposes also. So coconut cream is also very good for the uh, salads and ice cream and also the, the desserts. Uh, and also we have uh, uh, coconut water and king coconut water. Uh, now this is uh, fast, it's a fast popularizing product among youth and health conscious consumers as a natural, natural energy drink. Uh, because it contains uh, vitamin, vitamins, minerals, uh, amino acids, and electrolytes. So it is available in natural and also in flavored forms. And we manufacture coconut butter, coconut vinegar, coconut sugar, coconut aminos to use as a substitute for soy sauce, then coconut uh, arak as it's a beverage, uh, alcoholic beverage, then copra, and also punak oil cake uh, used in animal food and other things. So then I move into the spices, spice sector. So you can see the logos in this slide, uh, Ceylon spice, Ceylon cinnamon. And uh, in order to differentiate Ceylon cinnamon from cassia, the cheaper substitute for true cinnamon, we have developed uh, these uh, logos to identify the Ceylon cinnamon and also Ceylon spices in the world uh, other producing countries. So you can, with these labels, you can identify the pure Sri Lankan cinnamon and other spice products. 80% of the world true cinnamon market is supplied by Sri Lanka. This uh, pure Ceylon cinnamon trademark uh, is reg registered in many countries in the world. And uh, also the, the Ceylon Spice Master Brand is covering uh, five spice categories, cinnamon, pepper, cloves, nutmeg and mace, and also cardamom. So you can, uh, you can use this uh, taglines and also the trademarks to, uh, to mark, market these products in your uh, Russian market. Also, we produce a lot of uh, value-added products uh, like essential oils, uh, high in chemical composition, aroma and color, uh, high purity, and we use a lot of ad advanced technology in this extraction process, such as uh, supercritical carbon dioxide extraction. Uh, Ceylon uh, essential oils are mainly taken from the spices and aromatic plants, such as citronella, vetiver, and a lot of herbs are available in Sri Lanka, and we use these herbs to extract these uh, essential oils. Uh, Ceylon cinnamon is ex uh, exported as uh, uh, the spice and also as a value-added uh, thing like uh, oil. Uh, we have uh, leaf and bark oil, and also we export as it as cinnamon, cinnamaldehyde. Then Ceylon pepper is uh, High, our Ceylon pepper has high piperin con content compared to the other manufacturers in the world and it has a high pungency and also uh, it is very uh, good for your, the, the, the countries with cold climate and when you eat this, uh, you can get the hot taste and also hot feeling and also high piperin, due to the high piperin con content in our product. So our, our um, spices are available uh, in, uh, mostly in the uh, 
uh, all uh, certificates are available and this is good. Our spices are beginning from the home garden level, most of the are uh, under organic certificate. And also uh, those uh, all required certifications for to uh, prove that the food safety is available at, uh, and all the supply chains from farm to uh, export market are now certified as uh, healthy and also the safety for the food safety. Safe food uh, is one of the major products we export to uh, Russian market. Uh, at the moment, uh, about nine companies, nine processing centers are registered in the Russian uh, or the Russian authorities to export Sri Lankan seafood. And all, altogether, we have about 32 EU approved processing plants in Sri Lanka. Tuna is the number one product we export. And a lot of uh, value added forms are also available. Sashimi quality tuna, tuna loins, fresh tuna sticks, tuna topping, and also tuna sako blocks. Apart from that, we have other aquaculture products such as prawns and also crabs. Then uh, also we have uh, marine aquaculture products such as sea bars. And also uh, the, uh, our, our seafood industry, the fishery industry comply with the international best practices and regulations uh, and quality standards such as IUU, IOTC, friend of sea. So we don't uh, uh, catch the uh, small fish and we, 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 we catch our fish in a safety manner. And also we, we want to now promote our seafood as a sustainably sourced seafood in future. Now we are going to brand our seafood as sustainably sourced seafood because we comply to all international regulations when we uh, harvest fish from the sea. Fruits and vegetables. Uh, our country is blessed with tropical climate and uh, geography that suits a range of vegetation. Therefore, Sri Lanka has been supplying the world with a range of tropical fruits and nuts and vegetables. Uh, the product basket uh, consists of fruits uh, such as banana, pineapple, papaya, passion fruit, mango, and some seasonal fruits such as uh, rambutan, mangosteen, sawasap, and citrus. And also we have a range of vegetables from starting from up country to low country, and also yams such as manioc, sweet potato, and leguminous vegetables. So now uh, Sri Lanka has introduced some new products to the market such as jackfruit and uh, it is used as a meat substitute, uh, pork, it is used as a substitute for pork in uh, Western and other countries uh, for barbecue pre preparations and famous burger huts in the world now use Sri Lankan uh, jackfruit uh, as a meat substitute in their products. And also we have banana blossom and it is introduced as a substitute for fish. So these two products are now much popular in the international market. And uh, we also have uh, organically certified uh, tea, spices, coconut and coconut based products, herbs, fruits and vegetables, and all international standards such as gas, EU, USA, the EU, and uh, all standards are available. And uh, we have recently developed the Sri Lanka standard also for organic products. And most of the growers are now converting to the organic agriculture. Recently, our president has declared that uh, he need to uh, grow more organic agriculture, the Sri Lanka to be more, uh, become an organic agriculture producing country so that with that blessing, now we are converting most of our agriculture production to uh, organic agriculture, and it is now good for the health, uh, health and safety of the consumers. And also we have a range of uh, uh, next slide, I will say why, why you should buy Sri Lankan products. 
uh, Sri Lankan food producers are constantly working towards food for health concept because now we are we have realized that uh, the world is more concerned on the health aspects now we the people want safe food and they need healthy food because of that now we have we are more focusing on uh, su supplying uh, food for health purposes so companies engage in the processed food industry comply with international standards such as ISO 9000, 22000, HACCP, Halal, Kosher, Organic, etc. Whatever the standards required in the world, we are now, uh, we can provide foods under the, those safety standards. And also, uh, most of the food exporting companies, they have their own farms and they, those farms are operated under their supervision. And also, we have organized farmer clusters in the regions to mainly for organic farming and those farms are certified by the international certification bodies and to ensure the quality of raw material at the producer level. Sri Lankan companies are constantly striving to create a greener fresh produce export image while continuing to improve crop quality, phytosanitary and organic standards, post harvest handling procedures and import the market trade relations. With that, uh, uh, you can see all the compliance standards we have in Sri Lanka. So we have all the food compliance to safety and healthy. So with that, I will conclude my presentation. Sri Lanka Export Development Board invite you to develop business links with Sri Lankan companies to source the best agriculture and fishery products for the Belarus market. And we could facilitate the links by organizing B2B meetings in collaboration with the Sri Lanka Embassy in Russia. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Madhani, for your detailed and interesting presentation. You have touched upon all the exp uh, potential export sector of the agriculture product sector in Sri Lanka. Uh, so now I uh, would like to invite Mr. Harsha Patpedi, Acting Director of Sri Lanka Export Development Board, uh, and he is, uh, during his presentation, he will be focused on export potential of the industrial product sector of Sri Lanka. Yes, Mr. Harsha. Yeah. Thank you, Tavisha. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, good morning and good morning and good afternoon wherever you logged in, everyone. Uh, on behalf of Sri Lanka Export Development Board, let me extend a warm welcome to you all to the present uh, webinar series today. And I take this opportunity to thank His Excellency and the staff of Sri Lanka Embassy in Russia, National Marketing Center of Belarus, and the Chamber of Commerce and Industries of Republic of Belarus for organizing this eminent webinar. Today, during my presentation, I'll cover the sectors such as apparel, rubber, gems and jewelry, ceramics, and two emerging and promising sectors currently in Sri Lanka, that is pharmaceutical and boat building also, where we seek FDs and FDIs and JVs for our expansions. Apparel, of course, this is the largest export sector accounted for around 40% of total export revenues of the country. And the industry has over four decades of experience catering to the world leading brands. Our highly skilled labor force is the key to the cost competitiveness and the Sri Lankan three major apparel companies among the world's 50 most important suppliers. A pioneering, we are the pioneer in green garment manufacturing and Sri Lanka is the home to the world's first ever green factory, which is owned by the brand is one of the leading uh, garment, uh, apparel manufacturer in Sri Lanka. 80% of our apparel factories meet the global environment for labor standards. And Sri Lanka is the first only outsourced apparel manufacturing country in Asia that has ratified all 27 ILO, ILO law conventions. We, uh, yeah, Sri Lanka has the rep, uh, reputation for of uh, 
ethical manufacturing. So we don't use child or the forced labor, no discrimination. And we have proper working condition within our factories and our fa the manufacturers are using latest and state-of-art technology for their day-to-day -day manufacturing processes at present. Currently, the industry is priority towards building a design and product development skill base within the country. This slide shows you some uh, export statistics. Of course, last year we have generated 4.1 billion US in export revenue and USA, UK, Italy, Germany, Belgium, you, uh, Australia, Canada, Netherlands, those are the major exports destination for Sri Lankan apparels. And in, when you take about the product sectors, infant, garment, uh, infant garments, children's garments, lingerie, casual wear, outerwear, swimwear, sportswear, those are the uh, products that we export to the, our, uh, uh, the buyers in overseas markets. Also, uh, Sri Lanka is supplying for the international brand, brands such as Mark and Spencer, Next, Nike, Gap, and Ralph Lauren. And also we have our own Sri Lankan brands such as Avirate, Amante, or Kelly Felder. Those are the products that we are looking, uh, the brands that we are looking to promote internationally. And we invite the, the potential importers or the buyers in the Belarus market to, to, uh, to, uh, to assist us to promote this, uh, our local brands as well. So this slide shows you some export, uh, export uh, the historical data of the exports. You can see the five-year export da uh, data. Uh, so you can see the last year, of course, we, it, it was a 5.5 billion business. And because of the COVID situation, it has come down uh, a bit this year and uh, last year. So we hope uh, with the, so within the next, uh, years to come, this will definitely catch up uh, as due to the previous situation. Rubber, when you talk about the rubber and rubber based products, of course, uh, you know, uh, as you are aware, Sri Lanka is has a reputation of a supplier of high quality natural rubber. And also, uh, when you talk about the cultivation, Sri Lanka has around 140,000 hectare, hectares under the rubber cultivation, and Sri Lanka is the biggest supplier of uh, solid tires to the world. Uh, we are capturing uh, around 30% of the world share. Also, so not only that, we are supplying these uh, products to the uh, world-renowned uh, uh, brands such as uh, Caterpillar, Solid Air Tire, JCB, Fiat, Kamatsu, so on. And also, we had a good demand during because of this COVID-19 situation. So it gives a uh, boom to the Sri Lankan sur uh, surgical and non-surgical gloves industry. So our manufacturers at the moment, they are uh, in the process of expanding their capacities to meet the global demand. So most for the last year, uh, from last year, uh, Sri Lanka is getting huge demand for the gloves in the uh, glove sector. Uh, USA, Germany, Italy, Belgium, France are the key market for the, these products. And uh, the last year, of course, uh, we had uh, around 816 million worth of uh, exports revenue from we generated from the rubber and rubber product sector. Uh, when we talk about the products, products what we export are the if we take the tires, solid tires, pneumatic tires tubes, uh, aviation tires, castor wheels uh, uh, represent the tire range and the gloves if you take with the industrial, medical, surgical and non-surgical gloves. And it, in addition to that rubber components, you have gasket washers and automobile parts and the carpets and mats are the key product sectors in the uh, rubber products. This is some uh, historical data, uh, the export performances in the last six years, you can see uh, la last year also 2020, we had some decrease in our uh, exports of rubber and rubber products. But when you see the, this slide, so you can see the uh, clear sharp 
increase for demand for uh, industrial and surgical gloves. Mainly, this is mainly due to the COVID-19 pandemic situation prevailing in the world today. There's another potential area uh, which uh, we can cater to the Belarus market there is a gems, diamond, gems and jewelry sector. Uh, as you are aware, Sri Lanka is one of the world's famous uh, gem mining destination, especially for the quality sapphires. So we are home for over 70 varieties, precious and semi-precious colored stones, so, such as sapphires, alexandrites, cat's eyes, spinels, amethysts, citrons, like so on. And also the we are the leading sapphire producer <coughs> and Ceylon blue sapphire is the finest in the world and world renowned it's for an, its natural color and luster. So we are the best producer of uh, blue sapphires in the world. So even we have the, uh, our own laboratory segment. So we, we employ the high, highly skilled professional gem cutters who can cut gems or the diamonds at maintaining the lowest tolerance. We have the highly skilled people who are having, uh, doing uh, gem cutting for a, uh, even for a foreign buyers as well. That means, uh, so the buyers can send their rough gemstones to be cut and polished in Sri Lanka. So we have that uh, facility, uh, the service as well. So in addition to that, uh, the craftsmanship and the creativity of our jewelry craftsmen help us to uh, emerge the Sri Lanka as a quality jewelry producing uh, center. So we, uh, when we talk about the foreign investments or the JVs, of course, the lapidary segment and the jewelry manufacturing sector you, uh, has the exist and uh, the opportunities for JVs and FDs uh, in these two segments. So availability of modern gem testing facilities and the issuance of uh, the well-recognized certification are the key factors that buyers look at Sri Lanka as a reliable source. So at, uh, we are, at, at present, we can uh, issue a, a well-recognized test, testing facility and the, uh, the certification within 24 hours today. So, so that's why the, most of the buyers looking to Sri Lanka for, uh, to source their uh, the gem uh, requirement at, uh, today. So in addition, uh, Facet Sri Lanka International Gem and Jewelry Show is organized annually. So mainly to promote Sri Lankan capabilities uh, by this, uh, the public and private sector in, in uh, the, the collaboration. So even EDB is, uh, is the co-organizer of Facet Sri Lanka and Sri Lanka Gems and Jewelry Association is the co-organizer of, main organizer of this product. So, and I take this opportunity to invite uh, the Belarus buyers, importers, and the jewelry manufacturers to visit next uh, show. And uh, EDB will, uh, that we can see the possibility of organizing a buyer delegation with the assistance of Sri Lanka embassy in Russia. So the last, uh, that two years back, uh, we had uh, three uh, Russian buyers who visited uh, uh, Facet Sri Lanka Gem and Jewelry Show and organized by with the assistance of Sri Lanka Embassy in Russia. When we'll talk about the exports, diamonds, Israel, Belgium, Switzerland, it's a major markets and uh, Thailand, Hong Kong, USA for the gems and jewelry, USA, Thailand, Japan are the main key markets. Uh, of course, uh, I, uh, uh, and uh, uh, this, uh, the ex export revenue generated uh, by the, this industry was uh, about to do 313 million in 2019, but it was dropped to uh, US million 148 uh, in 2020 because of uh, being a luxury item. So everywhere, uh, this demand for for the luxury item is dropped. Uh, mainly they focus because of the, the consumers more focused on uh, purchasing uh, uh, consumer goods. This uh, slide also sh uh, shows some uh, the statistics of the gems and jewelry industry for the past six years. 
and you can see uh, I've given the uh, the statistics of uh, the previous uh, the twenty twenty uh, as well. You can see uh, the sharp drop of uh, uh, the export revenue uh, during the last year. Pharmaceutical sector is uh, the emerging sector and the promising sector. We are uh, this now uh, our. our we are looking to expand the pharmaceutical industry in Sri Lanka. It's mainly is dominated by the imported product, which is accounted 85% of uh, the total, uh, represent 85% of the local market. Uh, local manufacturers only cater only for a 15% of, of them. But uh, the imported value was, was amounted to 196 million US uh, in 2020, and they, we mainly import. Uh, the uh, pharmaceutical products from countries such as uh, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, France, and Germany the last year. And also at the moment, uh, we have around 15 large scale private companies, uh, companies manufacturing pharmaceuticals, in, including state owned pharmaceutical manufacturing corporation. And also there are, we have two companies manufactured to the EU GMP standards, and uh, ho hopefully they will be UGMP accredited in this year. So also local manufacturers are only engaged uh, engaged in uh, finished formula manufacturing such as antibiotics, uh, antibiotic, uh, antibiotic drugs, uh, pain relievers, uh, dermato dermatological drugs, uh, that is creams and ointments and multivitamin syrups, uh, capsules like that. And also when you talk about the ex export, of course, export is not that amount, uh, the, that big, but it was only 6.82 million in 2020. And the major exporting destinations are Maldives, uh, Myanmar, Cambodia, and uh, Seychelles. Uh, the government has identified this sector as promising sector and could, uh, that could generate, uh, save, not only generate for, forex, but also to save as an import substitution industry. This slide shows you uh, some, the, what are the products, uh, dosage, uh, what we uh, locally manufactured. You can see the creams, uh, capsules, uh, dry powder in, uh, inhalations, uh, dry powder injectables. Those are the product uh, products uh, our local manufacturers are producing at present. The, as I told you earlier, the Total export value was uh, 6.3 million in 2020, and there's a, a two uh, few large companies who are manufacturing at present: Navista, Morrison's, Astron, Emergence Life Sciences, uh, Interfarm are the key uh, leading uh, manufacturers, uh, pharmaceutical manufacturers. Uh, in addition, in addition to that, uh, we have a state uh, pharmaceutical manufacturing corporation known as SPMC also producing uh, is a, one of the leading uh, manufacturer in Sri Lanka. Uh, since the government has identified this sector as a promising sector, they, uh, they, they could, uh, as I told you earlier, to save the forex. Uh, second, uh, several uh, initiatives, such as uh, establishment of a separate state ministry to look after the industry and to and the dedicated zones to, for, uh, for a farm industry industries to set up in Hambantota and Anuradhapura area in order to develop the sector to meet, uh, to expand for the expansions. Also uh, in Sri Lanka, we have the regulatory body uh, established for, for the, the to uh, regulate the sector. Like uh, we have the National Medicine Regulatory Agency, which is the regulatory body uh, authority, which regulates the entire industry. So, <clears throat> so Sri Lanka is, has the free, free health sector. So, therefore, the potential to cater to the local, state, and private market is possible. So, also the the currently manufacturers are looking to enhance their production capacity of of other key dosages forms as well, and also to to uh, to have the to expand the import substitution to the existing tablets, capsules, and liquids. And also they are in the process of expanding their products range to the uh, complex molecules. They are the, uh, 
we we need and we seek the foreign direct investments and joint ventures. Also, the the, the companies who are set up the farm school will get the benefit of uh, the the FTAs and PTAs and other trade agreement we have with other countries such as South uh, Indo Lanka free trade agreement, Pakistan Sri Lanka FTA. And also, we have the preferential access to Asia Pacific, Bimstick countries. Such uh, you, uh, the companies who are having such FDIs or the JVs with Sri Lankan companies, they will uh, definitely have the uh, opportunity to expand their market to uh, such countries. Ceramic and porcelain is another potential area where we can uh, look into. And uh, if we talk about the strength. We have the unique and distinctive and elegant products range with us, and also the availability of high priority raw materials available in Sri Lanka. Use of state of art, state of art, of state of art technology, and uh, the, our ability to confirming to the international quality and standards. Availability of designers and other technicians within the country are the uh, key uh, strength, uh, the strengths that we have in uh, ceramics and porcelain sector. And Sri Lanka produces tableware, centriware, and bathware, floor tiles, wall tiles, ornamental wear, and utility wear, and uh, red clay products, including roof tiles, are the key product areas we export under this uh, sector. This shows some the historical data of the export, uh, I mean, the statistic for the uh, past few years. Uh, ship, ship and boat building is another area. We uh, is an emerging sector. We are uh, we are looking for uh, the FDIs and joint ventures to expand. So especially when you talk about uh, the export markets, so Japan, UAE, and Singapore are the uh, key. Key, uh, key, area, uh, key uh, exporters, and also we have uh, around 30 boat and two shipbuilding uh, builders uh, operates in Sri Lanka. So, uh, the, when you talk about the subcategories, uh, pressure crafts, commercial boats, fishing boats, naval coast guard vessels, and three and four uh, ship uh, shipbuilding are the key uh, and ship repairing are the key uh, areas we are uh, doing uh, in this, uh, the boat and shipbuilding sector. Also the uh, gift fair, toys and lifestyle is another area where uh, you can uh, uh, have the potential to exp uh, expand into the Belarus market. Uh, Sri Lanka's uh, inherit craftsmanship and the cultural diversity richness, those are, uh, and would rich natural resources gives the, uh, the our producers to produce a unique products in this segment. Wooden products, uh, educational toys, ornaments, uh, readware are some of the uh, products uh, areas, uh, products that we are exporting uh, to the niche market of the uh, niche market in the international market. Handloom, when you talk about the handloom, uh, is a mainly the domestic based industry which provides live food for a large number of households in the country. These uh, ecological friendly uh, products has already grabbed the attention of niche markets in advanced economy, economies. And also the, uh, when you talk about the products, furnishing soft toys, cushion covers, curtains, are some of the key products we produce in, in uh, under this handloom sector. Having said that, uh, I'm uh, I'm in the last uh, the concluding my uh, presentation. Uh, thank you very much for li uh, for listening for my presentation. I, I invite uh, the Belarus uh, the interested parties, the potential buyers, uh, the importers, and uh, and the uh, investors who is willing to have a business link with us with the Sri Lankan parties. Definitely, the EDB will help you to have the proper and good relationship with the Sri Lankan uh, the business 
uh, community in Sri Lanka. So I hope the, uh, the, uh, this will help. This uh, the webinar will help to uh, create new business ventures for uh, both countries in the future. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Harsha, for your detailed presentations and you highlighted the uh, export potential of uh, our main uh, industrial sectors in Sri Lanka. So now, uh, on the invitation of the Belarusian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, now we have Ms. Nadia Paltharak, specialist on marketing from the National Agency of Investment and Privatization in Belarus. And during her presentation, she will focus on the business climate of the Republic of Belarus. Over oh. to you, Nadia. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. First of all, thank you, Mrs. Malani and Mr. Harsha for your presentation. It was really very interesting and very useful. Especially thank you for your translation of presentation. <laughs> it's really very, very helpful for us. Okay, dear colleagues and guests, I would like to welcome you all here again. It's a honor to present to you today key features of the Belarus economy and investment climate as well. Let me share my screen with you. Everybody see, yes? Okay, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can okay. hear you. Mm -hmm. Belarus is located in the eastern part of Europe. We are in the middle of two major economic unions, the European Union and the Eurasian Economic Union. Being a member of the latest, Belarus is also an NHS point to the market with over 180 million consumers of Russia, Armenia, Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan. Let me start with a quick economic overview. Belarus is a development economy, has a favorable investment and tax conditions, good infrastructure and preferences. Almost 70% of GDP is exported. Last few years, Belarus saw increase in investment inflow and interest from foreign investors. Significant amounts of investments were used to implement investment projects for the construction of the Belarusian nuclear power plant, Slavkali mining and processing complex, the third line of the Minsk metro and others. We consider our people, Belarusians, as the most important assets of the economy. According to the UNDP ranking, Belarus is in the group of countries with a high human potential. 98% of population have a professional education. In Belarus, more than 50 universities. Belarus is a country with open economy. We made a bid on expert development of high technology goods, medical equipment, pharmaceuticals, electronics, and composites, and services such as IT, tourism, transport, construction sector. Today, Belarus is the world's second largest exporter of potash fertilizers and, and computer services. Since the Soviet times, Belarus has been well known by its heavy industry. The world's largest 450 ton Belas dump truck was included in the Guinness Book of World Records twice, and it's produced in Belarus. Also, each 10th tractor in the world is called Belarus. This is the name of the plant located in the capital, Minsk. Next is agriculture. Belarus has a great developed and well-balanced agriculture system, which made it possible for such a small country to become one of the world leaders in dairy products and vegetable production. The agriculture producer can enjoy serious tax preferences with a single tax system of only 1% of revenue. There are guaranteed most favorable conditions in the terms of loans and borrowings. And of course, the IT sector. I believe everyone here has heard the latest ones about our high-tech power. I will get it a bit later. IT sector, a priority for FDI traction. IT sector has become attractive both for venture investors and strategic inventors and business angels. The financial and credit system of Belarus comprises a budget segment. 
the banking system and the financial assistance of extra budgetary funds, enterprises, institutions, organizations, and citizens. The financial sector is represented by 27 banks and 16 insurance companies. Another key feature is a well-developed legislation. In 2013, Belarus introduced law of investments. According to the law, foreign and Belarusian investors are granted equal rights in terms of business conditions. Since 2012, our country has been a member of Multilateral Investment Guarantee Agency. One more key feature is that our state offers a number of opportunities to reduce costs and consolidate special business conditions. Here is a list of preferential regimes which foreign companies can cooperate in. Let's look at them in details. There are six free economic zones located in all regions of Belarus. They are established for export-oriented production and located in specific territories. Free economic zone provides special beneficial regime for residents, such as exemption from land tax, real estate tax, and profit tax. Today, it's possible to become a resident of a free economic zone if you invest up to 500,000 euros. Next is Great Stone Industrial Park. Investors from all around the world can enjoy benefits of the Great Stone. This is only place in Belarus where you can buy a lot, lot, a land lot for implementing investment projects. Residents of the park are free from profit tax for the first 10 years. And after that, profit tax is reduced by half from uh, their general rate. Investors here are also exempt from land tax and real estate tax. Currently, there are more than 60 residents from Germany, Israel, USA, and other countries. Belarus is also known by its IT production, and there is a special preferential regime for that. It's called High Tech Park. A company can become a resident of High Tech Park by placing its business in Belarus. Because of recently introduced legislation on the IT sector, Belarus has become known as Silicon Valley of Europe. Next preferential regime is rural areas. This can be any location with under 60,000 people living there. Placing a business here exempts from profit tax and real estate tax, as well as custom duties and charges for initial equipment imported for the needs of the investment projects. Now we are moving to the latest created regime in the district of Orsha. It's a major road junction linking highways and railroads from Europe to Russia and from Ukraine to the Baltics. It also includes a big number of industrial enterprises and focuses on manufacturing mainly. Business is granted certain benefits there. Also in this region, potential investors in logistics may find new opportunities in Bremino Orsha Special Economic Zone. It's a multimodal logistic platform founded to operate with in-transit flow of cargo and organized production, assembly or repair of different consumer goods. Besides the preferential regime, investors have an option to conclude investment agreement with Belarus. It provides certain other benefits and additional government support to investment projects. It also gives flexibility to choose or to request the exact assistance from the state to do business even more successfully in Belarus. That is why big players choose Belarus as a reliable partner. Here are the companies which can break about the cooperation with our country and it's growing every year. National Agency of Investment and Privatization is a starting point for foreign investors to discover the country. We work on a one-stop shop basic and accompany projects at all stages of implementation, including post-investment support. We also would like to invite you to take a look at the Investors Roadmap portal located on our website. There you can find locations of all in investment opportunities on the map of Belarus, as well as statistics of different regions. You can even compare advantages of different territories. Check Invest in Belarus to see more. To finish with, I'd like to invite you to Belarus in order to study all that I mentioned today yourselves. 
Thank you for your attention. And if you have any additional questions, you can send them to our email or to call us. I hope that we will help you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Nadia, for your uh, presentation that uh, you highlight the uh, business environment of Republic of uh, Belarus. And today's last presentation will be delivered by Mr. Valery Sadhavod, Director of the National Center for Marketing and Price Study in Belarus. And he will focus on priority areas for Belarus-Sri Lanka trade and economic cooperation. Over to you, Mr. Valery. Okay, thank you. Your Excellency, Professor Amavansa, good day, dear colleagues. It's a pleasure to be present here today. I would like to extend my gratefulness for the invitation to join the event. I would also like to express our readiness to resume a joint work in the framework of the memorandum with Sri Lanka Export Development Board with the aim of promotion trade and economic relations between our countries. Belarus is an export-oriented country with a highly developed industry agriculture and activity developing service sector, high scientific potential and great transit opportunities. According to the basic indication, the leading place in the economy of Belarus is occupied by industry. In turn, the largest share in industrial production is the processing industry. 88.6%. In terms of industrial output, 13% is accounted by, for by state-owned enterprises, 52% by private-owned enterprises with a state share, 28% by private-owned enterprises, and 6% by foreign companies. Uh, in regards to heavy industry, Belarus has a highly developed industrial base for manufacturing the world-known machines. You can see on this slide, such as Belas mining trucks, Belarus tractors, mass trucks and buses, Belkamun Marsh electric buses and trolley buses and other. Belarus ranks among top 10 forest state in Europe. More than 40% of its territory is covered by forest. Products of the woodworking industry are exported to 60 countries. There are more than 4.5 thousand farms and agriculture organization in the Republic, which produce 80% of the agriculture sector's products. The remaining 20% is produced by personal, uh, personal subsidiary farms. There are more than 1 million of them in the country. The food sector is developing dynamically in Belarus and production volumes are growing. The meat and dairy industry accounts for about 50% of the entire food industry in the Republic of Belarus. Meat processing plants process about 70% of the salt livestock and about 90% of the milk produced is sent to milk processing plants. Uh, Belarus occupies leading positions in the export of the following goods and services. Belarus is among the top 12 exporters of tractors in the world, the top five exporters of dairy products, and the top 10 world exporters of meat. Belarusian food is widely known outside the Republic and has the potential to increase export on, to foreign markets. Based on the results of 2020, is represented in the markets of 116 countries around the world. 
uh, dear colleagues, now I would like to draw your attention to the important issues concerning the state regulation of the import and goods into the territory of the Republic of Belarus, which is carried out in accordance with the legal provisions of the Eurasian Economic Union. The element of tariff customs regulation regulation are single commodity nomenclature of foreign economic activity of the uh, European Economic Union, uh, common custom tariff of the Eurasian Economic Union, common rules for determining the country of origin, the import customs duties, rates are in relation to goods imported on the territory of the Republic of Belarus from third countries to the common custom tariff, which pr present a list of customs duties rates ordered in accordance with the commodity nomenclature, which is used to classify goods in foreign trade. The import customs duties rates applied to the groups of goods under consideration are presented on the slide, you can see. <clears throat> the Treaty on the Eurasian Economic Union determines the cases of tariff exem exemptions on tariff preference. Preferential, uh, preferential treatment provides for the guaranteeing of annual uh, later trade preferences by developed countries to developing on least developing countries. Sri Lanka is included in the list of developing beneficiary countries of the EAU common system on, of tariff preference, which will enter into force in October 12, 2021. In addition, the following goods are included in the list of goods eligible for tariff preferences upon the importation into the custom territory of the EU includes the following goods, tea, fresh fruits and vegetables, clothing, rubber products, electrical and electronic products. The rates of import custom duties in the amount of 75% of the base rates of the CCT may be applied for goods imported from Sri Lanka if the requirements stipulated by the rules for the determined mining, the original of goods are met. Uh, you can uh, see uh, QR code in order to know more about all preferences in import to Belarus. In this section of the common system of tariff preferences of the EEC website, you can study in more detail the rules for determining the original goods from developing countries. Uh, Non-tariff regulation measures are presented on the slide, but they aren't applied to the groups of goods under consideration in trade with third countries. Importation and circulation of a certain group of goods in the territory of the EU is possible only with a document of con confirmation of the state reg registration of product safety. Control over the quality of imported products includes registration, testing, confirmation of conformity, declaration of conformity, certification, assessment of products, registration of products safety. The Republic of Belarus has a unified list of products for which mandatory requirements are established in the custom union. 
which includes inter alia, food and light industry, products, dishes, electrical and electronic products, tires and wipers. Uh, food and light industry products are subject to sanitary and epidemiological control. State regulation in the field of conformity assessment and accreditation in carried out by the state committee, the for standardizations of the Republic of Belarus and other state bodies within the complement complements. Uh, dear friends, uh, National Center for Marketing can help any company from your country uh, to find partners on the territory of Republic of Belarus. Thank you very much. Uh, on behalf of the National Center for Marketing, let me please proceed uh, with the next topic of our uh, material. Uh, this is going to be dedicated to the trade and economic uh, cooperation between Sri Lanka and Belarus. Uh, our country maintains trade with more than 170 countries. In 2020, the foreign trade turnover of goods amounted to about $61 billion, which is 15% less than the previous year. Uh, the main trade partners uh, you can see here, uh, of course, it is uh, Russia, China, next Ukraine, Poland, some other European countries. Uh, last year, the trade turnover between Belarus and Sri Lanka decreased by 14% and amounted to 32 million US dollars. Exports from the Republic of Belarus to Sri Lanka in um, 2020 uh, was expressed by mainly uh, potash fertilizers, which amounted to 96% uh, of the total volume of goods. Uh, however, Sri Lanka also imports from our country unroasted malt, stamp paper, newsprint, tire cord materials, measuring and control devices, and some others. In turn, in 2020, Belarus imported goods from Sri Lanka totaling uh, more than 7 million US dollars, uh, which is again more than uh, the previous year in 2019. Traditionally, in fact, half of the Belarusian imports from Sri Lanka are tea, as we've seen from the previous presentations uh, made uh, earlier by the representatives of uh, agricultural sector. Uh, it should be noted that Sri Lanka is the second trading partner of Belarus in the world in terms of supplies of this type of product. So we are very keen on uh, continuing cooperation in this field. On the first place is Russia, which is interesting because from Russia we import supplies already packaged import tea. Um, Going next to the uh, next group of uh, products, uh, meaning electrical and electronic products, clothing and rubber products also take the leading positions. In 2020, the import of rubber products more than doubled, mainly due to increase in the supply of tires. But the volume of clothing imports from Sri Lanka decreased, despite an increase in the supply of knitted gloves and mittens impregnated or coated with plastic or rubber. The purchase of fresh fruits and vegetables from Sri Lanka is not carried out. According to statistics, Belarus imports fruits and nuts which are already cooked or canned. Moreover, the import of this commodity item in 2020 reached the value of 7,000 USD dollars. At the same time, we import some tropical fruits like bananas or pineapples, avocados from Vietnam. So it might be interesting for Sri Lanka to uh, make uh, more st uh, strong this promising import uh, group of products. In fact, the only spice imported by Belarus from Sri Lanka is cinnamon. And the supply of these spice fr from Sri Lanka to our country has increased by four times lately. It should be noted that our country also supplies cinnamon from Indonesia and Vietnam, even in larger volumes than from Sri Lanka. 
In addition, Belarus imports from other countries such spices as cloves and vanilla from Indonesia, nutmeg, anise, berrien from India, pepper, dried or ground from Vietnam. Nevertheless, the main supplier of imported spices for us is still Russia, as in the case of imported tea. In 2020, the import of seafood, namely fish fillets, decreased by five times. And uh, with regards to the porcelain products imported by Belarus from Sri Lanka, we can say that they primarily include table and cookware. Last year, deliveries actually increased by 44%. Our country imports tableware and other household products made of this material mainly from China, but Indonesia, India, and Thailand also sell porcelain to Belarus, even in larger volumes than Sri Lanka. So please pay attention to this prospective group of products. Also in 2020, we started importing Sri Lankan figurines and other decorative ceramic products. Over the past year, the import of coconut products, in particular coconut oil and yarn, has increased significantly, more than two and a half times. But at the same time, based on statistical data, the supply of dried coconut has totally stopped. Thus, uh, analyzing this information, uh, it can be argued about a certain potential of increasing export of number of Sri Lankan goods, which deliveries declined in the past year to Belarus, such as fish fillets and dried coconut. Then, uh, potential of establishing supply of fresh fruits, which are exported from Sri Lanka to other countries and imported by Belarus, for example, from Vietnam. Uh, then potential of increasing export of ceramic products and porcelain and increasing direct supplies of tea, cinnamon and other spices, which in turn are already imported in prepackaged form from Russia or imported by Belarus from other South Asian countries. Moreover, it is possible to consider the feasibility of creating a joint venture on the territory of Belarus for the packaging of tea or production of seasonings. Uh, next, let me please make a brief entry about tools to promote entry into the Belarusian markets, which might be of interest for our Indonesian uh, companies present here today. And by that, I mean how our National Center for Marketing may be of assistance. Uh, as it was previously mentioned, uh, our Center for Marketing is an organization under the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Belarus and provides assistance in establishment and development of trade economic relations between partners in Belarus and abroad. For this purpose, we offer several tools to promote entry into the Belarusian market. Uh, Obvious, uh, the most obvious tool is marketing activities, and there are a set of measures to attract customers and increase sales. The main types of marketing activities are marketing research, presentations, exhibitions, distribution of advertising contacts, sales, as well as other sales promotion activities. The National Center for Marketing conducts marketing research of the Belarusian markets for increased foreign, interested foreign companies. The research includes studying and determining the demand for products, studying barriers to entry to the market, finding consumers for products and business partners and other aspects at the request of the customer. Uh, we've seen in the chat room that some of the participants uh, from Indonesia posted uh, questions about entering markets with their types of products. And uh, I would like to stress that we are able to provide all necessary information for that, but we need uh, the request, uh, the more detailed request about the type of products and about what might be of interest to you. And if you send us such a detailed request, we will follow up with uh, everything that you might need. So please uh, be sure to use our contact information directly or through the embassy of Sri Lanka in Moscow with whom we are keeping in touch. 
Another tool, Export by Portal, uh, which is also an effective channel for distributing marketing information about the company in Belarus. It is an electronic commerce platform, and it was created by our Center for Marketing in order to render information support to Belarusian exporters in promotion of their products on foreign markets and vice versa to advertise foreign business on researching the Belarusian market. Uh, Portal Export BY is an electronic showcase of Belarusian and foreign goods and services and technologies. All, all information is available worldwide 24 hours a day and the users from 192 countries of the world visit this website. Foreign companies have the opportunity to register and show their products and services, delivery conditions, prices and photos. And links to this portal can be found on the websites of our partners and on the official websites of embassies of the Republic of Belarus worldwide. So please uh, feel free to uh, look through this portal to register, to provide all the information that uh, you consider relevant to our potential Belarusian importers from you and other interesting uh, interested companies. According to our internal statistics, uh, on this portal, seven Belarusian companies are operating in the Sri Lanka market. Tw uh, 62 Belarusian companies are interested in the Sri Lankan market, and they stated as such uh, in their uh, application forms uh, posted on this portal. And 118 users from Sri Lanka visited the portal for the last year and a half. And I hope that after today's event, their number will increase. As one of the tools of promoting business cooperation, the National Center for Marketing arranges business visits of foreign delegations to Belarus, holds online video conferences, organizes business meetings and forum, forums with foreign participants in Belarus and abroad, as well as exhibitions abroad. So if you have any interest in making direct contact with uh, potential partners here, uh, after we can provide you marketing research materials, uh, we may arrange a video conference with them to continue negotiations. I would also like to note that the Center for Marketing is the operator of the National Exposition of the Republic of Belarus at the World Expo 2020, which is going to be held in Dubai later this autumn. The center also publishes a journal, Export of Belarus, which represents export potential of our organizations and Belarus as a whole. This journal can be of use for foreign companies interested in exploring the market. We also provide educational services for specialists of Belarusian companies, which are involved in foreign economic activities and procurements. Another distinctive activity of the center, which enables development of trade relations, is operation of the official website for information support of procurements of the Republic of Belarus, istrade.by, which is a resource that provides information on the procurements of Belarusian enterprises and organizations. Comprehensive information and consulting support is provided by our specialists for all types of procurements on a competitive basis in Belarus. Non-residents, such as uh, uh, Sri Lankan companies, uh, can also take part in tenders held in the Republic of Belarus. Here you can see our contact information. Uh, please make use of it. We will be uh, glad to provide any needed information for you in uh, your research of the Belarusian market to give you direct contact to the companies or organizations which are uh, managing uh, different aspects of trade and economic uh, activities in Belarus. Uh, thank you for your attention. We are ready for questions if there are any. Uh, thank you, Mr. Valerie and your colleagues, uh, your colleagues from the National Center for Marketing and Price Study in Belarus for 
your detailed uh, and informative presentations that you highlighted uh, potential like uh, I mean, the product sectors that can be uh, expand business to business con uh, connections between uh, uh, Belarus and Sri Lanka. And also you have highlighted uh, services, some of the services that you are providing for the uh, companies in Belarus and also for the foreign companies to connect with the businesses in their counterpart, uh, with the counterparts in Belarus. So uh, now we come to this uh, question and answer session. Uh, but um, I mean, uh, you are uh, I mean you are invited to uh, post your questions and answers in this. Uh, uh, I can see that a lot of uh, questions have been answered by now uh, from the Belarus side. Um, so EDV, what you uh, pr propose to like, uh, we are going to con uh, ask again these questions. So, uh, because most of these questions have been answered by Belarus side. Uh, I have, do we have, do we have to repeat it them again? Or what do you think, what do you suggest? Aisha, I think uh, that's uh, two uh, questions still pending, so. Uh, yes, yes. Yes, uh, there's one more uh, question that uh, how possible for you to give an idea about the market for physical exercise products, such as uh, resistance bands made out of rubber. Yeah, uh, this is uh, from the uh, one of the largest manufacturer and export of natural latex uh, exercise resistance bands in Sri Lanka, supporting, uh, they are supporting more than 100 ba uh, brands in the world. Is there anybody uh, that uh, you can answer that question from the Belarus side? Uh, if I may, uh, actually, as we've seen in this chat, all the questions are united in terms of how to enter the market and they differ only in the types of products. Uh, that is why our reply still uh, uh, goes through for all of them. Uh, we need to have... Uh, more detailed request uh, with the uh, all the necessary codes to search for statistics and to make uh, research depending on the type of products. Uh, as of right now, we can't uh, indicate uh, the availability of uh, these or that products stated in the questions, but we may uh, help you later if you post us a direct request. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, again, there's a question from the uh, one of the companies in the uh, uh, electric electrical products. Could you please tell me about the electrical products imports in Belarus? Uh, I mean, what kind of electrical products is that related to the construct construct construction industry? I think. This is related to the electrical products imports in Belarus. I try to answer this question, but I will speak in Russian. My colleague will help translate in English. Talk aside the вопроса по электрическим приборам, но это та же тематика, которая и по Import uh, concerning the imports of electrical products is basically the same domain uh, we've just discussed about the uh, sports products so we need to specify uh, exactly what kinds of products are supposed to be uh, exported and uh, this information could be provided either by us or by the center for marketing i guess we we в чате оставили email белорусской торговой промышленной палате и в случае возникновения вопросов по товарным позициям по импорту по экспорту то есть какой-то статистической информации вы на этот email напишите более подробную информацию что конкретно вас интересует мы вам окажем содействие в подготовке такой такой информации 
Uh, for all the participants in the chat box, uh, please find the email of the Belarusian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. It's romanmok at cci.by. To this email, please uh, send uh, all the you know the requests, information you require from us uh, concerning the uh, possible cooperation with uh, Belarusian partners, uh, as well as uh, information you require for maintaining your business uh, in Belarus and. The same is for statistical information. Да, в том числе любые вопросы по установлению бизнес-партнерства, поиску партнеров, как на стороне Республики Беларусь, так и на стороне государства Шри-Ланка. The same is for um, maintaining uh, business cooperation contacts in Belarus and in Sri Lanka. Thank you. Uh... Again, there, there's, uh, there's a question that uh, is there a significant demand for dried fruits and vegetables in, in Belarus? I think that uh, present, presentations done by uh, National Center for Marketing and Price Study in Belarus, they have given that information in their presentation. Um, yes. So, yeah, and uh, uh, I think as uh, our colleagues from the National Marketing uh, and Price Study in Belarus uh, has correctly uh, uh, mentioned that it is better to get the more details about these questions and uh, more details from uh, from the our companies in Sri Lanka, so then uh, they, they can they can always uh, they are welcome to send these uh, queries to us as well the trade division of the Sri Lanka embassy in Moscow so we can always connect you with the uh, these uh, Belarus uh, organize organizations relevant organizations in Belarus uh, so they will give the more details when the, uh, once we get the uh, once we can get the I mean the more uh, details from the companies. Uh, yeah, on behalf of the uh, our companies and the Sri Lankan side, I would like to ask few questions from the uh, our um, colleagues from the Belarus. Uh, actually, this is for the one uh, the for the both the Belarusian Chamber of Commerce and Industry and also for the. Uh, National Center for Marketing and Price Study in Belarus. Uh, what are the, the, do you have particular plan activities uh, that is focused for Sri Lanka uh, in the coming, in the 2021? In your agenda, you have any plans, activities, so you propose to uh, any kind of programs to connect these uh, business to business connections? We, uh... I will speak in Russia with my colleagues, with translation through my okay. colleagues. Что касается каких-то конкретных планов подписанных, у нас таких планов с кем-то подписанных нету. Как я говорил, у нас есть подписан меморандум о сотрудничестве с Цейлонской бизнес-ассоциацией. Uh, concerning the working schedule and uh, exact uh, plan for cooperation for the upcoming year, for example, we don't have it as such, but we have we do have a memorandum of understanding signed with the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce. Я могу только сказать, что в целом азиатский регион, включая Шри-Ланка, это тот регион, который вызывает особый интерес в Республике Беларусь, в выстраивании торговых отношений в Республике Беларусь. Uh, I just can add that uh, the Asian region as it is, uh, including, for, uh, of course, uh, Sri Lanka is of specific interest for uh, Belarus as a a promising market for development of bilateral cooperation. Мы всегда открыты и готовы к контактам, к установлению или способствованию установлению контактов между бизнесами нашими стран. 
we're always open uh, for uh, contacts, for uh, promoting business contacts uh, between the businesses of the two countries. Я думаю, наша сегодняшняя встреча это такой вот первый шаг, ну в этом году по крайней мере первый шаг по установлению контактов в случае заинтересованности со стороны бизнеса Шри-Ланки. Мы безусловно готовы активизировать наше сотрудничество. Uh, I suppose uh, this event today is a, really a milestone and a, a first step for uh, establishing uh, win-win cooperation between our countries and we will be um, open and we will be ready to further um, the cooperation between the businesses and when we receive uh, proposals, business proposals from uh, Sri Lankan side. В сегодняшних условиях пандемии мы пока общаемся в онлайн режиме, но мы когда, после окончания этой ситуации приглашаем и бизнес Шри-Ланки в Республику Беларусь, что называется ОЧУ, посмотреть и установить контакты. И также готовы рассматривать предложения по выезду в Шри-Ланку Шри как с бизнес-визитами, так и с выставочными мероприятиями. Uh, because of the pandemic, uh, we are limited to online uh, events like this today. Uh, but when it's all over, we uh, um, we take pleasure in welcoming the uh, Sri Lankan delegation here to Belarus. And uh, it would be a pleasure for us to visit Sri Lanka for a um, business, uh, business mission, uh, with a business mission, to explore uh, potential cooperation avenues. Спасибо. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. And uh, is there any feedback from the uh, National um, Center for Marketing and Price Study? Uh, uh, in regards to the same question for the National Center for Marketing, uh, we can say that we also don't have direct uh, plans, bilateral plans, on uh, even on fulfilling our present memorandum. Uh, but at the same time, we unite uh, Sri Lanka with the general region of Asia and uh, at the moment the country that uh, we've been um, in contact uh, more than four of time five times I mean we've uh, already held uh, several web webinars uh, dedicated to different spheres of activities and it was with Indonesia and uh, as the practice shows, uh, the interest from our Belarusian companies uh, is uh, rather large and uh, the logistics uh, doesn't fright them and uh, they are eager to also search the market, find partners there, as well as uh, welcome uh, those partners here on the territory of Belarus. That's why we are uh, ready to resume the work uh, on uh, realization of the memorandum and uh, perhaps uh, formulate some uh, activities that could be included in such a plan. But uh, at the moment, we don't have uh, any present program on developing trade and economic relations. Uh, okay. Uh, could you please also uh, uh, give some more details during this web uh, webinar or afterwards, uh, send more details about this uh, EA EU common system of tariff preference preferences that uh, which will be entered into force on uh, 12th October 2021. Can you give us some uh, more information about this? We may uh, send you more information and send you the links uh, to the relevant documents, which uh, actually it's a, a great deal of material. Uh, that is why in the framework of this uh, webinar, I think it will be too extensive, but uh, we'll uh, provide you with the uh, brief summary and with the links to the full extent of the material, definitely. Yeah, because that you said that Sri Lanka is also a beneficiary country for that system, right? Yes, it, it is included in the, the, the list of such countries, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, 
because uh, now the, more, most of the questions are about these uh, rules and regulations and uh, I think uh, the how to um, uh, find joint venture partners for the particular sectors. So I think that you, you have given the first hand information during these presentations. So always better to get uh, more details from the companies so then we can connect with the uh, relevant uh, organizations in Belarus. Uh, so, is, uh, from EDV, is there any other questions to be raised? Uh, Ms. Anoma? Yeah, thank you, Tavisha, uh, for the opportunity. Yes, uh, I think we have shared our questions and uh, you have uh, got the clearance. Yeah. Uh, those questions. Uh, and uh, we hope uh, to work with the, both the organizations to have a second phase of this uh, uh, this uh, event we have initiated uh, uh, with the leadership of uh, Sri Lanka Embassy in Russia. So uh, let's work out for the next phase of this program. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, then I, uh, I mean, because, uh, because I'm sure that you will get more questions after these sessions from both sides. So you, uh, as I said before, that you're always welcome to uh, contact the trade division of the Sri Lanka Embassy in Moscow. And uh, we will, we will uh, connect you with uh, either side. I mean, the both sides, we can connect with the coordinate the, between the uh, organizations. And uh, we are happy to uh, facilitate all, all the queries uh, coming from both sides to connect business to business contacts. So uh, in that, uh, so on behalf of the Sri Lanka Embassy in Moscow, we would like to thank Sri Lanka Export Development Board, Belarusian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, uh, National Center for Marketing and Price Study and uh, Price Study, and National Agency of Investment and Privatization in Belarus, for collaborating with us today, uh, organizing this successful business uh, webinar and also delivering presentations and uh, uh, inviting business sectors from the both sides. So uh, from the uh, Sri Lanka embassy in Moscow, we would like to continue as uh, EDB said that we would like to continue this dialogue further. And uh, we are planning to organize uh, sector-wise web webinars uh, in future selecting potential sectors that is interest interested for both countries and uh, which will be followed by B2B sessions. We will, we will see how we can arrange this kind of uh, platforms in the future uh, because uh, all our efforts is to, I mean, our focus is to uh, connect business to business uh, connections between the two countries. Otherwise, no point of having just for informative sessions. We will see how we can uh, work uh, together for, uh, uh, I mean, uh, organizing that kind of programs, B2B programs in future. Uh, so with that objective, uh, we would like to conclude this webinar today and hope, uh, hope to see you all in this kind of dialogue in future. And thank you very much for spending your valuable time with us and uh, joining with us today uh, from Sri Lanka and from Belarus. So thank you, thank you very much and have a nice afternoon. Thank you. Thank you as thank you. well. Thank you. Thank you, Bye.